So the real value of having coordinate systems um, comes out when you start to split vectors into their x and y components, and then you can work with them and do all kinds of cool physics with them. Um, I know this part feels a little bit pedantic, um, but once we have this, it'll be a phenomenally powerful tool for solving different problems. Um, so here's the idea. You have a vector at some funny angle. So here's a displacement vector, 32.4 meters off at 25 degrees. Um, how do I actually write that in x and y components? Well, the first thing to do is just to draw the x and y components. How do I draw them? Um, for the x component, I imagine that the sun is like dead ahead here above the vector. So that's the sun up in the sky. And it's going to project a shadow just straight down from the tip of that vector. So straight down. And I draw a picture of the shadow it project on the ground, the horizontal ground right there. So notice that this, the tip of my vector here that I drew on the ground exactly lines up with the tip um, of that vector there, um, but straight below it. The other thing I want you to notice is that I have put an arrow on that shadow. It's really important that that has an arrow on each of your components. So this shadow that I just drew is called the X component, and it has to have that arrow because that arrow tells you the sign. The fact that it's forward means that it's going to be a positive thing. Um, if we draw our coordinate system on here, which we should, I'll just draw it over here, X is going to be positive in the forward direction, and y is going to be positive upwards like that. Um, so that tells me the sign of this x component. It's going to be positive. I haven't calculated it yet, but we'll do that soon. The next component is the y component. And it goes as if there's sort of a flashlight over here that's projecting light this way. And it's going to make a shadow on a wall over here is how I'd imagine it. So it's also an arrow. It also needs to have an arrowhead on it. So it's got to have a direction to it. We're going to call that dy. It's a little subscript y. It represents the y component of my displacement vector. And I can tell that it's up, right? So it's going to be positive too. It points overall in the same direction as your main vector, but in the just the y component of it. If you imagine that light here shining on this wall, um, the arrowhead would be pointed up. That's where the arrowhead would project. So both of these components are positive, but how do I know how big they are? That brings you back to your good old friend, Sokotoa. I hope you didn't forget him um, from grade 10 math. Sokotoa. Um, Sokotoa tells you um, the components or the sides of a right angle triangle. And is this a right angle triangle? Oh, yes, it is. Because X and Y are always 90 degrees to each other by definition, right? X and Y picture a graph. X and Y are always exactly 90 degrees to each other. So this must be a 90 degree triangle with an angle theta right in there of 25 degrees. Um, so let's just go through Sakatoa and see what it tells us, and then I'll use that to, to find some sort of short-form tricks for you that will make your life a little bit easier. I'm just going to erase some stuff so I have a bit more space. Um, so first, I'm going to do the sine, right? So sine is always opposite. So sine of your angle, sine of 25 degrees, is the opposite side. Um, and opposite my 25-degree angle is this dy side, right? That's the one that's totally opposite there. So dy is the opposite, divided by the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is clearly the side across from the right angle, or the longest side, and that is d, my, my vector there of 32.4 meters. Well, that's kind of nice, and I could rearrange that easily for dy just by multiplying both sides by d. So if I times this by d, times this side by d, that will cancel the d off the bottom, and I'll be left with d a little low on space there, so I'll write it down here. d sine of 25 is equal to dy. Um, or if I write it forward, dy is going to be d, and I'll plug in my numbers now because I'm actually there at the end, 32.4 times sine of 25. And I'll actually do that on my calculator so we can get a number. Um, 25, and I'll take the sine of it. Um, and then I'll multiply that by 32.4. And I get 13.7. Uh, and I've got three sig figs there. And my units will remain meters. So 13.7 meters there. In the x direction, I'm going to use the cos part of Sakatoa. Um, so let's try that out. So if I did um, cos of my angle, 25 degrees, 
that will equal the adjacent over the um, hypotenuse, right? So cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side, the side closest to my angle is dx, and the hypotenuse is still d. So once again, you can multiply both sides by d. That'll cancel the d off the bottom here and put a d over there. And that'll give me dx is d cos 25. Or when I plug all my numbers in, dx is going to be 32.4 times cos of 25 degrees. Um, so I'll actually get a number for that on my calculator here too. Um, so we'll do cos of 25 multiplied by 32.4. And that gives me 29.4. So I'd say that dx is positive. 29.4 meters. So note the sign of these, right? The sign is positive. That's because of my coordinate system. Um, maybe I shouldn't underline it because that looked like a negative there when I underlined it. So positive uh, 29.4. Um, but the sign is positive because of my coordinate system right here, saying that x is positive in the forward direction. And I can see the direction of my vector is positive forward. Um, and the same with the y component, right? It's upwards. And I said that y is positive upwards, and this vector is clearly pointing up, so that must be a positive number too. Um, now, I promised I'd show you a trick to do this faster, so I will show you that. Um, I'll just erase this here so I have some room to do it for you. All right. So the trick is that you're going to be doing a lot of the same type of triangle every time. And so you learned about Sakatoa in order to do a whole wide variety of triangles. But the reality is that in physics, we just don't have a wide variety of triangles. We repeat the same triangle every time. So you can actually just think about this as the same case every time. So the mnemonic that I use is that cos is close, which kind of rhymes, so it's nice. Um, and what that means is that when I'm doing the x component, I can skip right to the final answer rather than rearranging the ka part of Sakatoa, which you can still do, that's fine. But I can speed it up just by jumping right to 32.4, my hypotenuse, multiplied by cos of 25 degrees. So just because I know that cos is close and the dx side is close to that angle. So if you see whichever side is close, to your angle, just jump in with cos is close. You can do 32.4 cos of uh, 25. So we'll type in 32.4 on my calculator times cos of 25, and that gives me once again um, 29.4 meters. And don't forget to check the sign, it's positive, right? Because this vector is overall forwards. You can see the arrowhead on it is forwards. Um, dy, if you think about a highway, um, signs are far away. Um, so you can remember signs is far away, like signs on the highway super far away. Um, so in this case, I'll do 32.4 sine of my angle because the dy side happens to be far, far away from your 25 degrees. Um, so that's the mnemonic that I use there. So 32.4 times sine of 25 degrees gives me the 13.7 meters, and I should always check my sign. Just move this back. Um, so check your sign here. It's positive, and it's positive because that vector is overall upwards. All right, let's try it with one more example to hopefully make more sense. So here's another case. Um, the first move you're gonna do is draw your components. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna put my flashlight over here and imagine I'm shining a light on a wall right here. That wall would give me the dy component, which is gonna go straight up, but it's gonna go just right to the level of the tip of that arrow. And notice that it'll have an arrowhead that's pointed in the same vertical direction, which is up. So that's dy. dx is gotta go in the same horizontal direction as that arrow. In this case, we're gonna to have to shine our light from below to see that shadow. So it's a bit, bit of a funny angle, but there's our light shining and that gives me dx right there. So let's use our, our trick that we just learned that will speed up things for us, and we'll do dx first. So dx is gonna be 45.6, so that's the hypotenuse. And think about dx here, is it close or far away from my angle? Well, here's my angle of 22.1 degrees. dx is clearly far from it, so I must be using sine here. 
So I'll do sine of 22.1 degrees. So here I'm going to do 45.6 times sine of 22.1. And that gives me um, 17.2 uh, meters. The units will stay meters. But watch out for the sign here. So notice that dx is pointed backwards here, right? That, that vector arrow really matters. Our coordinate system for all of these problems so far is going to be that y is positive up and x is positive in this direction. So that's now in the backwards direction. That means that that x component of d has to be negative. That sign will make a really big difference. So make sure you keep that negative sign in there. dy, on the other hand, um, is actually going to be positive. And I can tell because it's overall up, right, which matches my coordinate system of y being positive up. Now, using my fancy trick that we just learned, um, I can write down dy a little faster, not having to go all the way back to Sakatoa, although if you like to use Sakatoa, that's no problem. Um, we'll do 45.6 meters. Cos is close, right? And dy in this case is very close to my angle. So it'll be 45.6 cos of 22.1 degrees. So we'll do cos of 22.1, and then I'm going to multiply that by 45.6. And that gives me a positive value, positive because it's upwards, 42.2, um, and the units are still meters. And so that would be my dy right there is going to be this value. My dx is going to be the negative 17.2 meters there. All right. Let's try to pull these things together. Now, what if you do a whole problem and you end up at the end of the problem with a dx that is forwards and a dy that's upwards? So notice that these guys have arrows on them, right? The dx is forwards. So that's your dx right there. The dy is upwards and it has an arrow on it too. Um, so we're going to put those together to get d. The first thing you have to do is know, like, what direction do I even draw d in? Um, so what I do for that is I imagine I start at the base of my dx value. So where did dx start? It started over here. And then I look at, well, where did, so that's sort of the start. I'll write in start. Um, where did I end up? Well, I ended up way over here. That's the end. How did I get there? Well, I went from start to finish. And that's the arrow that I need to put on my final vector, from the start of dx to the end of dy. Um, Hopefully that helps with figuring out how to draw that guy. Um, let's just scroll down a little bit so I have more space. Now we'll actually do the calculation of d. So there's actually two parts to this calculation. I have to get the magnitude of d, like how big is it, but I also have to get its angle theta. So always watch out. Don't forget that there's two parts to these kinds of problems. And also remember that this is a right angle triangle, and right angle triangles we love because we can use Sakatoa, and we can also use Pythagoras' theorem. I think Pythagoras' theorem is easier here, so that's the one I'm going to use. Um, d squared is the hypotenuse, so it's going to be each of those components squared. It'll be dx squared plus dy squared. Rearranging for d is really easy here. I just square root both sides. So that cancels the squared there, and I'll get d on its own is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. Now watch out, you cannot cancel those squares and square roots on the right side of that equation because there is adding in the middle there. That prevents you from canceling squared and square roots. Don't forget that. Okay, so d equals, we can plug in our numbers here. dx is 67.8 and it's getting squared. Uh, dy is 42.1 and it's squared too. And all that will be square rooted at the end. So just type into your calculator, 67.8. Square that, add it to 42.1, square that, um, and then square root the whole thing, and I get 79.8 meters. So you might be like, oh, I'm done. I found the total displacement D. That means that from start to finish, you traveled 79.8 meters. But actually, there's a little bit more going on here than just, um, just your displacement. There's also that angle in there, right? We've got to get our actual vector, theta. We need to figure out what that is. So for theta, we need to use some Sakatoa. Um, let's write it out again, Sakatoa. And in this case, you could actually use any part of Sakatoa because you now know all three sides of the triangle. But the one that I recommend using is the Toa, and that's because that uses dy and dx, 
which you were kind of given at the start of this problem, whereas the sa and the ka, the sine and the cos, are going to require you to know that hypotenuse, which you already calculated with Pythagoras' theorem, and maybe you made a little mistake or a rounding error, and then that would just throw things off. So best to use the toa. So the toa part tells me that tan of my angle theta is going to equal the opposite. The opposite side is dy, right? That's the side that's far away from the angle theta, divided by the adjacent. Adjacent side would be dx, right? That's the one close to your angle. Um, getting theta alone, I'll just do it over here. Um, to undo a tan function, right, get theta out of it, you want to use the inverse tan. So it'll be tan to the minus 1 of that dy divided by dx, the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we're ready now to plug in our numbers. Theta is going to be inverse tan, tan to the minus 1, of 42.1 divided by 67.8. So you're doing your calculator, 42.1 divided by 67.8, and then hit inverse tan of that, um, and I get... 31.8 degrees. So that is my angle. And this picture here is already indicating the angle, so I don't really need to do any more than that. Um, but if I want to be super, super thorough about this, I could write it in a really fancy way um, by doing this. I'd say D is the 79.8 meters, and then the direction is going to be, well, initially this vector looked like it was going east, and then it kind of peeled up to the north a bit. So I'd write 31.8 degrees up to the north. Um, and that would be my vector all written down. Um, that would be sort of like my final answer right there. That's my total displacement vector with those coming from those x and y components.